Oil. A top request on our list every Sunday. What is it? Spiritual growth. And probably as long as I'm here, guess what the top request on our list is probably going to be? Spiritual growth. It's been that way for what, six years now? So uh, we got a good thing going. Uh, let's now if I my wife's off me cough drops, but if I have that, I who knows what I'll do. But spit it out, maybe. I might get so excited. No, but I thought, you know what? I've I've been asking people to to pray for spiritual growth, spiritual growth, spiritual growth. We've been doing this for years. And then I thought, have I have I really just broken it down? What is spiritual growth? What are the basics of spiritual growth? And so that's what I want to preach to you about this morning. Good. Just the basics of spiritual growth. I have to admit that I, I've shared some of this with, with my friend Bob Blankenship and and he actually uh, sent me some notes that he had. So a lot of this are notes that he had. And some of it's stuff that I've, I've added to. And, uh, but, but I appreciate Brother Bob Blankenship. He's a, he's a dear friend. Uh, shares all kind of material with me. Uh, he, he's, he's not old, but he's older than me. And, and he's preached a lot longer than me. Uh, so uh, I certainly appreciate his, his willingness to share information. But as I was going through this, I was like, yes, yes, yes. This is exactly what we need to be reminded of. So I'm probably not going to share anything today that's just like brand new. Wow, I never knew that. But it's kind of like our membership reaffirmation. It's just good to be reminded of it. And it's good to just kind of, every once in a while, if you if you use, well, how many of y'all uh, carry a pocket knife with you? Several, several of the guys, yeah. Well, if you use the pocket knife, if it's not just a status symbol, to, yeah, I got one. But if you ever use it, you pull it out and you're thinking or you're praying and you just whittle a stick. Or, you know, you ever have to use it to cut rope or twine and use it in your daily life. What happens to it? It gets dull. It gets dull. I mean, just too much of a good thing. I mean, it's still a good knife. But the blade loses its edge. Guess what happens to us? Good people. I love every one of you. Have confidence in you. But life has a way of yes, sir. taking yes, hits sir. And, right. and wearing you down. Yes, right. And before long, we're not as sharp. Mm -hmm. We're not as careful as we once were. How many people know that Grandma and Grandpa lived life a little more holy or a little more standards, if we can use that word without causing great fear, a little more standards, a little stricter than we do now? I'll admit that. My, my grandparents... Ooh, some of the ways that, I mean, my parents. There were certain things that my parents would do and would not allow us to do just because they wanted to be careful. I went to college with folks who went, show me where it says I can't do that. <laughs> the internet. Show me. How silly. We can show you principles. Mm -hmm. We can show you what right. God says. This is what I want for you. Right. And if you're partially intelligent, you can deduce what you should and shouldn't do. And so what the old timers did was they had a little wet stone. And they would rub that knife. Just pull it out and just rub it back and forth. Every once in a while. How many of you know what the old whetstone is? <laughs> you ever seen the ones that are wallowed down because they've been used a lot? Yeah. Guess what? How many of you all have seen the Bible with the curled up pages? With the writing in the margins? <laughs> Sharpening their spiritual knife. That's right. So today, I'm probably not going to share with you anything that you're like, wow, what a revelation. But I hope to just get your knife out and just rub it a little bit back and forth on the stone. Is that going to be okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope so because I don't have anything else. <laughs> we'll go eat early if that's not okay. But I want you to know, if you don't hear anything else I say, that it is possible for everyone to grow spiritually. Yes, sir. Yeah. You mean Sister Connie? 
she's our she's our saint. She's she doesn't like it. she doesn't like it. She's already shaking her head, but it's time I'm not gonna look. But we all respect her because she's just lived a consistent, faithful life through good times and through bad times, through health and sickness. It's not a, it's not a marriage, but yeah, you know, she she has been faithful to God through it all. But guess what? She can still grow spiritually. Sure. And lest we ever think that we've arrived, mm -hmm. beware. Right. Right. Beware. I thank God for, for the way He's created me. You all know I'm a very emotional person. I have high highs and I have low lows and my wife goes, oh, don't remind me. She's a little more just even killed. I'm way up here and I'm down here and I'm down. But you know what? There are times when I'm on spiritual high. God's blessings are being poured out. Spiritual victory. Every time I pray, it's like the heavens just open up and God answers prayers and, and He's right there and the relationship is just close. And there are other times when I say all the right phrases, when I read the favorite passages that usually stir me, when I have my personal devotions, and I'm going, God, I need to hear from you. And it's like it's just bouncing off the ceiling and just falling and crashing back down to earth. You don't have to admit if you've been there. If you've served God for more than a few days, you've probably been there to some degree or another. But even at my best, at my highest highs spiritually, guess what? I can grow spiritually. That's right, yeah. Right. I can grow. So, it's possible for everyone, regardless of your status. You may say, Brother Leonard, I'm just brand new at this Christian living thing. And, whew, I don't know if I can do this or not. Hold on. You can do it. God can help you. The Holy Spirit has, has been offered to you Amen. to give you the strength to Amen. do everything that this book requires you to do to live a holy life. That's right. You know, it's natural for a child to grow up and want to do or imitate or replicate what he sees those that he admires doing. If you've had children, you know this. If you've watched children, you know this. They want to be like them. They want to learn how to do something. Uh, they want to help mom and dad do things. How many of y'all have cleaned up much bigger messes than you should have had to because you let the kids help? Yeah, they want to do it. Well, guess what? Sometimes it's going to be messy. But you still want them to learn, so you allow them to get in there and they turn the mixer on way too high. <laughs> Make a mess. You ever seen brand new Christians? They come to the Lord. They get gloriously saved and they turn their mixer on way too high. They try to jump up to saint status right away and they're just out burning fire for God and they're catching things on fire that never should have been on fire and they're just, whoo, slow down. Calm down. But you know what? They're growing. They're learning. They'll learn to contain it. They'll learn to, they'll learn to get it to, it, it to where it, it becomes more fruit. They're not just burning everything up. They're, they're, they're tending the garden, so to speak, and they will have a harvest. But guess what? Some of us have lived a little longer. Oh, the Word says be patient. Be patient. How do you grow? Well, sometimes you grow and, oh boy, I'm starting to learn about hoary hairs. You know, ooh, sometimes you get a hair. I, I had an eyebrow the other day. I mean, I don't know where that thing came from. <laughs> It was way out here. I said, Krista, something, I mean, I was literally rubbing my eye, and I'm like, something is in my eye. And I go look in the mirror, and there's an eyelash coming all the way down, and it, it hit my eye, and I'm like, where? Hold on. I thought it was a hair that had fallen out. No, it's attached. And I said, Krista, you got to help me. And, and so, you know, she, she, she trimmed up my eyes or something. I, she said, I don't know if we're helping or hurting. This may make them grow more. But she got that one to quit poking me in the eye, and I said, wow. Sometimes, some of us are like that little eyebrow. 
We just say, hey, we're put here. Woo, and we shoot way off and God goes, hold on, we're going to trim that up a little bit. Yeah. Trees, I could have used a tree analogy and then my wife wouldn't have been so embarrassed. But, you know, you get that branch way out here. You know, and all it's doing is just putting out leaves and more and more. And if you want to have fruit, sometimes you've got to trim all that extra growth off so more energy is put into bearing fruit. We have flashy Christians. We have people who, woo, let's do, let's see. And you know what? I love, I love when the Holy Spirit comes. Please don't go out of yes. here yes. and say that, say that, well, Brother Leonard just wants everybody to sit on the pew like a bump on. You know me better than that. And if, if I, that's what I want, I don't practice it very well. But I also don't want just drummed up right. fake right. emotion. Right. The world sees through that like Yes, that. they do. Yes, they do. And if you don't have it, it's easy to identify. Mm -hmm. May God help us. God help. That's right. Folks, being satisfied with being born again just isn't enough. That's a starting point. You've heard me say it before. I'll say it again. You have to get in before you grow. I think I shared it this week. I can't remember exactly where. But you, you swim in the ocean, not into the ocean. you got to get saved. That's the starting point. Get in. And then you grow. As Christians, we will grow naturally. There's bound to be growth. If you're not growing, there, there's really no such thing as just a stagnant Christian. So beware if you're like, man, I've just kind of felt this same way spiritually for years. Beware. That's right. That's right. Because if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. Right. And if for some reason you say, well, I don't believe that, take a good look at a little pond right close to our house. What happens to water that doesn't move? It starts getting kind of nasty. It starts getting stuff growing on it. It's not a real pleasant picture. It's the same thing can happen to your spiritual life if you go stagnant. My admonition there is you're either moving forward or you're moving backwards because God continues to give new light. That's right. It never ceases to amaze me reading through the Bible again. There are things that just stand out. Like, where was that? I've read through the Bible several times. I don't remember. I thought it was interesting. Uh, the other night at Uplift, Anthony was sharing. He's like, here's a story in the Bible. I know I've read it before, but it never really never really jumped out to me. He shared in, in Uplift that, that God just kind of brought this to him. And, and he said, it's right there in the Word of God. And he said, I know I've read through it, but I just never knew it. I forget now what, what story he was even referring to. But I was like, yeah, yeah, it's in there. <laughs> but what happens? You grow spiritually. Maybe you were immature enough that you, you really couldn't grasp what it is that God was trying to teach you as you went through it the first time. And so he goes, okay, you're reading my word. That's fine. I'm going to point out some things. And then the next time you come through, now the ground's been prepared. And now you're like, wow, I get it. That's why they don't teach calculus in kindergarten. you, you got to get some basic math. <laughs> you got to know your numbers. You got to you got to know that there's alphabets put in math problems and and, and there's all kinds of different letters and things. But if if you don't get the base knowledge, you're never going to understand the larger, harder complexes. And in the Word of God, it talks about that. It says some of you just need to get off the milk and start getting into the meat. <laughs> but you got to have the milk first. So we got to grow spiritually. I want us to look at an example. Just a common man in Acts. His name was Cornelius. If you want to turn to Acts, I should have told you already so you can turn there or grab your phone and, and get there. But Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. We'll read the first several verses and then we'll skip down. Acts chapter 10, verses 1 through 8. We'll read a story about a man named Cornelius. Uh, he lived... About 62 miles northwest of Jerusalem on the Mediterranean Sea. 
He was a Roman soldier. He was over a band of approximately 100 soldiers. He had responsibilities, but he also had people that he had to report to. He didn't have the opportunity of knowing what you and I know. He didn't have the Word of God in his hand. But he was helped in a special way. Let's pick up the reading, Acts chapter 10, verses 1 through 8. It says, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth with one Simon of Tanner whose house is by the seaside, he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants, a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. Drop down to verse 30. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. And Cornelius said, Thy prayer, and, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms have, excuse me, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter, who is lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner, by the seaside, and when he cometh shall speak unto thee. Immediately. Therefore I said to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore are we all here present before God to hear the things that are commanded of God. How can we all experience spiritual growth? <coughs> First thing, we can start right where we're at. You start where you're at. It's very simple. Pastor Leonard, that's not big. I, I said it wasn't going to be big. Wow. But you start where you're at. We don't have to know anything about his past. We aren't sure what he even heard or, or how much of, of God or the gospel he really knew. As a Gentile, he was not allowed to go beyond the temple courtyard. There were actually a lot of things against him. You see, we can put off developing as a Christian because our past is just too big. There's too many hindrances in our past. Brother Wally talked about scars of our past in Sunday school this morning. And But by the grace of God, he's alive. While some of his friends that, that did some of the things that he was involved in as young people had to pay with their life for decisions that he was making as well. So it's just the grace of God that's kept him. Guess what? We all have those stories. That's right. Everyone has something that you're just not proud of. Something that separates you from God. Something that, but by the grace of God, you would be in a devil's hell today. May God help us to not worry about having to get it all fixed before we come to God. He says, come as you are. Amen. So that's where you start. How do you start spiritual growth? You just start where you're at. The present time is just not right. You know, there's too many things in my past, and right now there's just too many things going on. I'm too busy. You know, I, I've got to get some things straightened out. And once I get my finances in order, you know, then I should be able to relax and I'll, I'll really take time to get into the Word of God and study and do what I know I should do. But right now is just not, not the right time. We are deciding that we're not available to do. God says now is the accepted time. That's right. 
So we start where we're at. This Cornelius, he started where he was at while, while being a soldier in Rome, while living life with a family. He wasn't waiting for a more convenient time. Wait until my military service is over and then I can serve God. No, he started where he was at. He didn't quit being a military guy to make a pilgrimage to a holy site. He was seeking for God while living life. We start where we're at. Think of the story of the prodigal son. Where did he start? Going back to back to father. Started in the hall pen. Well, actually started before that. When he left the city, he was broke. And things just kind of got worse. He thought, well, I'll, I'll start working and then I'll, I'll, I'll get myself taken care of. A lot of times, that's not how it works. You don't take care of yourself. You don't clean yourself up and then ask God to clean you again. You just come with all the mud and the filth. And as the story of the prodigal son, he accepts you right where you're at. That's right. Stinky Amen. clothes and all. Amen. He loves you. He hugs you. He forgives you. Amen. And says, now we go from here. Yes. Now we bring out the room. Now we bring out the rain. Now we start restoration. But you start where you're at. That's right. Some people say, well, I don't know much about the Word of God. I, man, it's just really difficult to study. I read it in King James. Did you hear me stumbling around? Hey, I know there's a lot of folks that King James... King James will get you to heaven, I promise. Mm -hmm. But he ain't the only one. And if you need to read the Word of God, and the reason you're not reading the Word of God is I just can't understand that old English writing. Find you a version that will work. Sure. Read the Word of God. Sure. Start where you're at. Well, I don't know. They might be listening to the higher-ups in the conference, but oh well, here we go. I bought one of my kids a comic Bible. Good. It has little drawings and things. And David and Goliath, I mean, there's little David and he's swinging the rock. And I mean, it's all, it's all drawn out like comic strips. <gasps> Guess what my son did? Right. Right. He read it. Interesting. Wow. What would I rather him do? Read that? Or read a real comic book that has no spiritual value? Guess what he does now? He reads an old Bible with just words in it. But he does it every night. Every night. Folks, develop a love for the Word of God. Yes. Not just in your children, in yourself. And guess what I have to do? I have to pray. Because my wife will tell you, I like reading books about like I won't like watching grass grow or watching paint dry. It's just, I can read. I just don't enjoy. I don't get joy. I, I don't read fiction books. So it's not like, well, he just doesn't read the Bible, but he spends out. No, I, I just, man, reading them. Come on, there's something else that can be done. So guess what I have to do? I have to discipline myself to get into the Word of God. But you know what I find? Nuggets in there. Yes. There's things that God wants to talk to me through, so what do I have to do? Do what you know to do. Sure. Start where you're at. You don't like reading the Word of God? Pray. God, give me a desire. Give me a hunger for yes. the Word. Yes. Amen. You want to grow spiritually? Amen. That's right, brother. Start where you're at. That's right. Second thing, I've got five minutes to be done with three more points. Brother Wally, you need to start praying. I always pick on Brother Wally. Always. <clears throat> Brother Wally loves me and he does pray for me. Next, do what we know. He did what he knew to God. He, he feared God. Maybe he was acquainted with the Ten Commandments. We don't know that. For what he understood, he reverenced God. You want to know what's interesting? I've been to mission fields where they didn't have the Word of God printed in their own language. And yet they had a concept of who God was. They know there's a God out there, and sometimes they don't even know all the theology or how. They don't know He created the world. They just know that there is a powerful being 
out there that when we reverence and respect, things go better for us. And then missionaries come along and start preaching and teaching and they go, hey, now, they may have some, they may be praying to the earth and sky and not know to call it God. And, they, and so you have to correct a little bit of some theology in there. But guess what? There's a consciousness about God. Yes, sir. It's just built into humanity. Yes, sir. That's right. And I believe that God is faithful to everyone. You've got several copies of the Word of God. We had the Gideon here the other night, or the other day, and he gave, he gave us some Bibles. So if you didn't have a Word of God, you could have. Every one of us have just ample opportunities to have the Word of God. We don't have the excuses of, well, I never knew. But you know what? God has a way of revealing Himself to everyone. We thank God for it. But this guy, we don't know what all he had been taught. We don't know what all he had heard. But he knew that God needed to be honored and regarded. He served God. He gave generously to those in need. He knew that you should care about others and treat others with respect. He prayed to God always. He sought for God's help. He knew that it was necessary to consistently call upon God. Folks, let me just tell you, if you call on God only when you're in trouble, I was going to say shame on you. I'm trying to think of a different way to say it, but I've already said that, so there. Shame on you. If that's the only time you call out to God is when you're in trouble. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know... My wife gets a whole lot more work out of it. See, that's the problem being married to a preacher. You get used in illustrations a lot. But my wife gets a whole lot more work out of me when it's more, she adds more to when she calls Leonard. If it's always she needs something, she has to have something, you know, just all the time, pretty soon it's like, whew. Okay, honey, I, I'm working. I got a lot to do. I, I'm, I mean, I'm busy too. And if every time <laughs> she calls my name, but guess what? There's times when she says, "Hey, Leonard, I really appreciate. It. Leonard, you've done a good job here. Leonard, I really appreciate you taking time with the kids. I know you're busy. I know you're going to have to stay up late to handle the rest of things." I know you're getting up early in the morning and we're all going to get to sleep in. That's been something that school just let out. So I'm, I'm reminding them, hey, y'all slept in two hours past when I had to get up. So I, I, I do remind them. But you know what? When she has a relationship with me, not just when she needs me to do something. Leonard, I got something heavy. I need you to move. Hey, Leonard, you know, so we don't need to call out to God just when we need him to move something. We need to tell God, God, we appreciate you. Thank you for the blessings. Yes, yes. More than just a, you're just blessed, food, blessed, girl, blessed, thank you for it, just name amen. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah, that's good habits, and your kids will fire through those prayers real quick. But when you pause and say, Lord, I'm really grateful for this food. Lord, I'm grateful for this cup of cool water when the boy's been out mowing the grass. And then when, when, when you're just in a grateful, Lord, thank you, thank you. Learn to be thankful. Not just call out on him just whenever you need him. Right, that's right. That's right. Do what you know to do. Yeah. Right. Stay in the Word. We must begin with what God has already taught us. John 7, 17 says, If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Guess what? If I ever try to trick you all up here, and I try to preach something that's not in the Word of God, if you're growing spiritually, guess what? It says you'll know. Something will go, wait a minute. That doesn't ring true. Guess what? I need that accountability. Read the Word of God. You have it for yourself. <coughs> do what you know to do. Get in the Word of God. Don't just let the only Bible reading that you get every week be whatever I call out from the book. Right. Get into the Word of God. Study it for yourself. Do what you know to do, and then spiritual growth happens. The third one. We obey what we learn. Probably the biggest key right here. As you study, you will learn. Now, what do you do with that knowledge? 
When God shows you, wow, this is in the Word of God. What do you do with that? Now you've got a decision. God in His faithfulness has revealed new light to you. What was the song we sang? I'll say yes. Lord, yes, to this new light. To your will and to your way. That's right. With my whole heart, <laughs> I'll obey. <coughs> it's not this, well, okay, Lord, but uh, we'll hold back. It's okay to test the Spirit. This is brand new light. Guess what? The deceiver comes as one who's bringing light. Oh, hey, here's something God wants you to do. Here's, here's a good idea. <coughs> do it and do it real quick. I mean, hurry, hurry, let's do this. This is of God. Yes, do it. And sometimes you go, if it's of God, then it'll test. The fleece will be wet. The fleece will be dry. God doesn't say we can't test Him. Be careful for your motivation behind testing God. But it's okay to test God. Test the Spirit. Test, test what you're hearing. Is it of God? Does it ring true with His Word? If it doesn't, guess what? Not of God. Because He will never contradict His right. Word right. for your will That's or for right. His will for your life. That's right. So if it doesn't pass that test, you're done. Stop worrying about it. Well, you just felt so right. Don't worry about it. It goes against Scripture. It's not of God. Rebuke it. Get it behind you. Move on. <coughs> oh, wonder, that's kind of harsh. Well, that's because I've fallen for those tricks too many times. <laughs> so I'm just teaching and preaching from the heart. That's right. Do what you know. Obey what you learn. Verse 6 says, He will tell thee what thou oughtest to do. That's King James for He'll let you know. Don't stress about it. Some people have the personality, and I'm, I'm, I'm related to some of them, but they have the personality where if you'll just lay out everything you want me to do and give me a 10-day plan, give me a, a two-month plan, give me where I should be at the end of the year, give me a five-year plan, give me a 20-year plan, I'll work the plan. No problem. Just lay it out, but I need to know. And sometimes God goes, I'll show you here. Then I'll show you here. And when we're here, I'll give you here. We go, but where's that going to put me in 20 years? And he goes, I got you. Trust me. And you're going, right. but to know your will is to do it, so just go ahead and reveal it. And sometimes I'm afraid if he did, we go, oh, <laughs> not doing all that. <laughs> That's right. Do what you know to do. And then obey what He tells you to do. When you know it's of God, you obey. John 16, 12 and 13. I have many things yet to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. You're not spiritually mature enough. You've not grown enough spiritually. Howbeit, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you yes, into confusion and... Wait... It's kind of caught me. See, that's one of the... She, she started. Mm. He will guide you into all truth. He'll guide you into all truth. For He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak, and He will show you the things to come. You want to know God's will for your life? You want to grow spiritually? Take that next step. Don't say, God, you've got to show me the whole plan or I'm not stepping forward. No, I'll say yes, Lord, yes. And when, when I've said yes to everything I know, guess what I do? I stand. And I say, Lord, reveal yourself to me. Oh, here's new light. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. Whole yes, heart, I'm obeying. Right. New, new information right. comes up. New Bible study. The preacher says something. Some, some godly saint in the church admonishes you in a certain area. Hey, I noticed you've been doing this. Have you considered this verse? And you go, wow, new information. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I'm going to. And guess what we're doing? We're growing. That's right. You want to grow spiritually? Right. Do what you know to do. Obey what you learn. We Amen. sing the song. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus yes, but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of His love until all on the altar we lay for the favor He shows and the joy He bestows are for them who trust 
and obey. That's right. Trust is salvation. Obe obedience or obey, that's the action. Right. We trust Him for salvation. He gives us light. We obey. We trust and obey. There's no other way. And finally, to grow spiritually, we obtain what we need. Sometimes there's preparation. Sometimes God says, this is what I want for you. And in order for you to do this, in order for you to be involved in this ministry, I really need you to buckle down, focus on some Bible study, focus on some spiritual characteristic, focus on this area of your life. Maybe it's a temptation. Maybe it's something that you deal with that He knows, I've got to work on this so that I can get you here. And you say, okay, what tools do I need? Anybody who does a good job with carpentry has tools. And you ask them which ones they like and they'll tell you. Anyone who does auto mechanics. Uh, we got some folks that deal with cars in here. You know, there's different products. There's different tools that they prefer. And they get, they get mastery of those tools. And it's like an extension of their arm. And they can do things and just make things. Wow. But you know what? Give them some old broke down tools. Give them tools that don't work right. And the next thing you know, they're just frustrated. And you know what happens a lot of times? There's people, I'm saved, praise God, and they want to go out and be used in ministry, and they're just excited to do, and they're just out there making messes of things, and, and, and you know, their, their heart's good, they want to do it right, they've seen other people do it right, and they think, you know, my dad, bless his heart, he'd buy a cordless drill from a Dollar General, and then be frustrated that it didn't work like the high dollar DeWalt's or that other people were using. He puts three screws into drywall, and the next thing, Man, this thing just doesn't have power. It's a piece of junk. Well, you pay junk prices for it and you want it to work. You know, get the tools. That's right. <laughs> get the tools. Good. In your spiritual life, just get the tools that are needed to grow spiritually. Good. Good. What do I need to do to grow spiritually, Pastor? Well, what's the thing that's keeping you from growing spiritually? Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. Let's see. I don't want to say cars or. Uh, you know, hobbies, entertainment. Some of them may be getting rid of some stuff mm -hmm. and putting other stuff in its place. Mm -hmm. So, get the tools. We're going to serve God. We want to grow spiritually. Prepare the area. Mm -hmm. If there's things that are hindering you from serving God, that's, that's A number one. Let, let's get that taken care of. Let's clean it out. You know, if there's, if there's problems, deal with it. And then, go, okay, now what tools do I need? I need a good Bible study. What's a good app on your phone that I can hear the Bible while I'm driving down the road? I typically listen to country music, you know, just jam. I used to all the time. That was my, my go-to music. I was surfing through, you know, boy, I, if I couldn't find anything, man, country music, and let's tap my foot, let's get something up, beat, help keep me awake, and I go... You know what? Plug in the Bible. Get the Bible reading. There's some dramatic readings of the Bible. I mean, you can find all kinds of stuff. Find some tools that'll help you. Whatever it is, that's just, I'm, I'm talking about me. Buy good music. Music is a wonderful, wonderful way to just get your mind saturated with thoughts on God and, and heaven. We talked about hell today so much that, that I, I was wanting to go plug in a CD about heaven. Brother Wally, we need to just next week just do the do the second part of that because it was talking about heaven. We we read through it, but we didn't get to talk about the wonders of heaven. We talked about how awful hell was, and I was reminded today I don't want to go there. I want to grow spiritually to where when when my time comes, he says, "Enter in, come on." You know what? I don't want to know that there's people in hell that can look up and see that I've made it, and they're worried about, oh, hey. You know what? There's no record that he looked down to hell and saw them. So I just want to be in heaven. Amen. And I want to do whatever it takes. And in order to do that, I need to keep growing spiritually. So I've got to get the tools. Whatever those tools are. I've got three, three or four books right on my nightstand, right beside my bed. Reading through the one, Pursuit of Holiness, right now by uh, Dr. Friedman. But it's tools. It's things that I need to help just sharpen. Okay? It's not anything grand and glorious. It's just doing what you know to do. 
When God shows you new light, you, yes, Lord, yes. And here's some of the tools to help you. When the whetstone gets too small and it breaks, guess what? I'm getting a new one. I'm going to go get another book. I'm going to go find another Bible app. I'm going to talk to my wife, and she and I study the Word of God together. And Hey, what study do you want to do now? And, and we'll, we'll kind of do some of that stuff. But you've got to obtain what you need. So in closing, just a recap. You want to grow spiritually? What we pray for every week. You want to grow spiritually? You want to advance into a mature Christian? Start where you are. Do what you know to do. Obey whatever new you learn. And obtain what you need. Go out and get the tools. Do what it is that you need to do. Well, Brother Lord, I can't afford it. I bet you can. I don't know if I can bet it's on the pulpit, but I, I assure you, you can. Show me your checkbook, and I promise you we'll find reference money in there. If you want to go buy a study book, or you want to, you want to buy something online that costs a little bit of money to, to help you in your spiritual walk, there's, there's money around that, that you can get what you need if you make it a priority. But do those things. Start where you are, do what you know, obey what you learn, and obtain what you need. It's possible for everyone to grow spiritually. Yes, sir. Let's all stand. Yes, sir. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Lord, some of this is very basic, very simplistic. Lord, we need to be reminded of it. I need to be reminded of it. Lord, we know it's your desire that we grow in you. Lord, we need your Holy Spirit to help us. Yes, you do. Guide us, direct us, grant us wisdom, shed new light in our life so that we can grow. And then give us the desire to say, yes, Lord, yes. So your will and your way. And Lord, we'll thank you for all that you do. It's in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen.